Hello and welcome to another Viking tutorial. Today we're going to be generating items. Specifically, we're going to make a chest that throws out an item. So with that said, let's get started. All right, so first thing I'm going to do is go to events here, grab a searchable, just grab a money chest. We're going to convert it to a custom event here. And we're going to remove the fact that we get some money and then the increase of the money. And everything else, we're just going to leave the same here. So we're going to hit OK. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to start making the item to generate. And so we're going to do that in the database here. I'm just going to select this one right here. And we'll just name this one item knife. And if we go to items here, we can see that the knife is the first out one followed by the spirit sword and stuff like this. So this would be like your items that you want this chest to have. It could be potion. It could be anything like that. And there are ways to do this dynamically. However, those are going to be more advanced using advanced variables. This is just going to be very easy to understand if you wanted a, an item system like this. So I'm also going to create a folder because this is where you're going to make all your items. And I'm going to place this item in that folder. Now what I'm going to do is take out the uh, image for the layouts. Take out this one as well. And we're going to change the graphic. And Bakking comes with this awesome marine bag. Looks like an item pouch kind of thing. And I'm going to use that for it. The next thing that we need to do is go to others. This is where the generation settings are going to be. So you can see there's no damage, generate an error. You've got all these settings you can play around with. The big one right here is we want this to last forever. So movement time means that it will last for 10 seconds and then it will destroy itself. Well, if you put zero, that means it's going to stay forever. So I want it to stay forever. So I'm going to do that. And you again, you can mess with all these other stuff. And then the number of steps, this will make it move. Well, I don't want it to move. I want to use physics to move it so that it looks like a jump. And so that's what we're going to do. The next thing I'm going to do is go to custom events here. And we are going to remove that. And we're going to come down here and say collide with other event. So I'm going to take that off because I don't want it to collide with the treasure chest especially while it's popping out because this first event page is basically pop out of chest. And that's all we need to do for now for testing. So I'm going to hit OK, OK. And we're going to go into the chest here and before the switch turns on, because when this switch turns on, it goes to after obtaining right here. And we are going to add in control here a generate event. And I'm going to select that I want it to be the item knife going to hit OK. And it's going to shoot from this. It doesn't really matter because we're going to use physics again, but we'll just face it towards the way that the chest is facing. Why not? With variables, this will be really nice if you want to set up a dynamic system. And then we don't even need to wait. That's all we need to do. So we can hit OK and play test. And if we go up to the chest here, it's not going to pop out, but it's going to spawn. And so we can see now what we can do with it. So since we want it to pop out, I'm just going to determine what direction. So I know that it's this, the blue one here, which if you don't know, you can look right here. The blue is the Z. So I want it to shoot towards the Z. And we're going to go back to the database, go into our custom event. And we're going to add a parallel repeat only once here. And this is where we're going to add the events uh, move with physics engine. And we want to do a little jump up. And then we want to do a little bit of movement on the Z axis. I'm going to hit OK. OK. And play test and see what that looks like. And there we go. Looks good. All right, so now we want the player to pick it up when the player touches this. So we're going to go back into the item here. And we're going to make a couple of sheets. One is going to be for when the player picks up item. And then the other one is going to be add item and play effect. We'll say play effect and destroy. Now you'll see the reason I separate this. It's mostly because of how the collision condition works. So basically it's going to be chilling right here once it pops out. And then in the player pickup here, the condition is going to be a collision. We're going to do it with the uh, player here. We're also going to have the player not collide with this. And all that this is going to do is it's going to instantly turn on a self switch. 
which if you don't have one, we'll just create a local value here. And I'm just gonna call this one a self switch A and then hit okay. And then we'll turn it on. And then that will be the condition for this one. And it's right here, the event self switch. We're gonna check if A is on. And then if it is on, we're gonna run another parallel process. We don't need collision and we also don't need the motion. So we want this to actually disappear. And we actually want it to disappear in here as well. You could leave it, it's only gonna be here for a frame, but it might help. And then the thing that we're gonna do is we're going to make it to where the item is increased for first, because we want that to happen first. Because if anything happens, we want at least that to have ran. Then the uh, next thing we're gonna do is provide a little item that says that you've got it here. So we could do it in the form of an effect, which we can select effects. I saw one in here for event templates, uh, this treasure chest one. And we could just simply do it on the player. We can wait to complete, and then we can actually go to control and delete event. And we could also somewhere add in a message that says you got this item, but we'll hit okay on these and we'll play test and see what this does. All right, so I'll go pick up the item and there it goes. Now that animation takes a little bit to go, so there's probably better animations for that, but so now if you ever wanted a different item, you could duplicate this chest and you could go to the database. You could duplicate this item, but change it out in this area right here under this one on which item it's going to be. And then in the chest, the duplicated one, you would just have to make sure that you change the generated event to be that other item. So it's a very simple system to understand. There are way better systems, like you could do this with variables and actually put out strings and stuff like this for the items and make everything out of one treasure box, basically. And all you gotta do is specify a string variable or something like that. But just for ease of understanding, I felt like this was good to get out there, get people thinking. And yeah, so I hope this video was helpful. Any questions, comments below, Steam forms, we'll get you figured out. With that said, I will see you at the next video.